Hey everyone, Squee913 here. Welcome back to Let's Play Alpha Protocol. Um, so, off camera, I, I tried the sneak mission uh, one more time. I did about as well as I did before, so blah. I went to go finish the mission, and he actually gave me another mission, which I uh, did not record. I tried to hit fraps, didn't work. So, what he said is he was all like, Hey, you want a top secret secret mission? I was like, dude, yeah. And he's like, man, I need you to sneak in this office here and you get some documents. And I was like, is, 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 am I going to get in trouble? He's like, yeah, dude, if you get caught, you're totally in trouble. And I was like, awesome. He's like, yeah, and you get to see what your assignment's going to be. And I was like, dude, double awesome. So that's what we're going to go do. Whoa. 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 This is weird. This game keeps, like, doing that. I don't like that. Are you waiting for clearance? Go ahead. Okay, I will. Okay, seriously, you gotta cut that out. Game. Game! You see this? You see this, like, all stuttery, jittery... This is no good. Go upstairs? How do I get upstairs? I guess maybe there's stairs over there somewhere. Oh, where's my uh no, no, no. Darn it, no. Okay. I used uh, what the Okay. There. Let's see where people are. There's that guy. That looks like it. Just him. That's good. Hang on. I'm going to turn down my sensitivity just a tad. I think that might be... Because I turned it up because it was too low. Maybe it's too high now. So let's put it like over here. Let's see if that helps. Okay. So I think I need to get over there, probably that way. Or I could try getting in this door when his back's turned. That's probably a good idea. There's no cameras, which is good. Okay, can I close the door again? I'm kind of covert off, can't close the door again. Unlock dossier. Did I get what I needed? Here. Oh gosh. Whoops. Alright, hang on. Dossier. How do I look at dossiers? Tab. Intel. Uh, retrieve data. More info on retrieved data. Sneak past security into the medical bay. Oh, the medical bay and recover the classified intelligence for Agent Parker. So that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. And then return to the interrogation room. That's nice. Dossier. Uh, new available info on factions. Okay, Alpha Protocol. This is good stuff to read, I think. Alpha Protocol is both the name of a government organization and also a term used by agents that classifies them as rogue agents to outside intelligence agencies. Agents that have gone Alpha Protocol are considered acting alone or are traitors, so if their operation is discovered or goes away, uh, no blame will fall on the United States. Not many within the government are aware of Alpha Protocol exists, and this separates uh, separation from the majority of Washington bureaucracy and oversight is intended to protect the United States from accountability for Alpha Protocol's rogue operations. Dot, 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 dot. 
Alpha Protocol insignia has some interesting symbolism based on the description in the records. The ring of stars and arrows represents patriotism and military might. The eagle's talents is strength. The serpent is either its enemies pursued by stealth or subterfuge. And the loose translation of the Latin phrase beneath it is where no one can follow. Okay. What ifs? What about the individuals? All right. So, Westerlidge. Yancey Westridge. Uh, reputation, minus one, neutral, age 48, American, chief of operations. 20-year veteran of the CIA and a five-year veteran of Alpha Protocol, Yancey Westridge has worked in both the counterintelligence and counterterrorism fields, earning a degree in infiltration affairs, or international affairs, sorry, and serving a tour of duty in the armed forces prior to the CIA service. Although rarely promoted, Westridge has a reputation as an exceptional field agent, expert at reading people, and quick at reacting to situations. He has a low tolerance for smart asses and prefers agents who act instead of talk. Impatience and blunt, uh, blunt opinions are what Westridge respects. Really? Huh. More so than smooth talkers or by-the-book recruits. One of Westridge's positive traits is that he knows his job. He's not a field agent anymore. He's a supervisor, so he has pursued the role aggressively, recruiting agents to act as his eyes and his hands while he keeps a bigger picture in mind. He is infamous for hazing new recruits to test their endurance and their reaction under pressure. He And he often relies on monitoring the results from a distance, gauging each intelligence reactions via monitors and sensors. So, I've, I've been thinking about this. Here's how I'm going to play my recruit. My recruit's supposed to be a smooth talker, a great field op. Um, and I'm going to play him as I normally play, as kind of a smarky, sarcastic kind of guy. But, this guy, I'm going to play him as... Um, he plays the game, in a sense. that He's really good at, at, at playing the game. And what I mean by that is... If, if this guy likes professional, straightforward, that's what he's going to be. If another guy likes sarcastic or harsh, that's what he's going to be. Why? Because, now, and, and, and of course, I'm not going to metagame this. Uh, I'm going to have to pick it up on my own or by reading, for example, reading dossiers where now I know what he likes, I'm going to play to what he likes. Why? Because you never know when you might need one of these people in your back pocket. So I'll have my personality that I'll play for, you know, whenever I can. But if I think that pretending to be a different way will get me on someone's good side and thus maybe make them an asset, my character would most certainly do that. Parker, reputation neutral, age 63. Alan Parker is a genius level intelligence analyst working for Alpha Protocol. According to his college record, he has degrees in political science, economics, psychology, although he never did homework in any of his classes and relied on taking the minimum number of tests to achieve a passing grade. Um, wow. Okay. <laughs> Parker also had an uncanny knack for knowing where he would be on the grading curve and scaled the effort he put into his assignments accordingly. Interesting. And Mina. Mina Tang is an analysis first, a tactician second, and a field agent third. She's been with Alpha Protocol for about a year, working primarily in encrypting and decrypting information. She assists Alan Parker on intel assignments, but is also called upon to help train new recruits in firearm basics. Her data analysis led to the discovery of several missing advanced prototype missiles from Halbeck's stock, and the evidence she obtained from the basis of the Desert Spear. Okay, so... So here's my deal. I'm going to be the man of a thousand faces. I am going to be whatever I think I need to be to get what I need to get. Okay. Hello? Can we... Can we go... Why am I suddenly in first person? Okay. Do not want to be in first person. Let's go over here. Open this door. I wish I could close doors again so lame. I mean, anyone can come up and see, hey, this door's open. Why is this door open? Let me go investigate. Nasari. Picked up a dossier for a Nasari. Who would that be? And yes, I am actually going to be reading most of these dossiers so that I know who I'm working with and what I'm working with. Uh, Nasari. 
Okay. Omar Mohammed bin Nasari is a weapons trafficker based in the Middle East. He has connections throughout Moscow, Eastern Europe, and has been responsible for selling off large Russian weapon stockpiles throughout the world. He has a number of armed guards at his disposal, and he runs a tight operation where laziness and joking around are punished with a bullet, and this attitude is mirrored in his guards' treatment of others who come to make deals with Nasari. Fair enough. Do I need this? No, I'm fine. No, crud! Ah, I was trying to... Oh well. I need to remember it's Z. Okay. I know that's my objective, but I'm gonna go... Sneaking around a little bit first. Well, how do I get in there? Hmm. Oh, that's where I need to go. So we're gonna go over there. This is what I wanted to use. There we go. That's what I wanted to do last time. Let's look around first. Got another dossier. Alpha protocol. More info on Alpha protocol. All right, we'll take a look at that in a second. Ah, uh, hello. It says it's green. Why can't they go in? Oh well, fine. All right, let's take a look at Alpha protocol. Um. Let's see. Alpha Protocol field agents are often responsible for something that's been nicknamed Yellow Brick Road. While the agency will provide agents with funds and tech needed for their assignment, agents are encouraged to build their own pool of funds and resources. Uh, ostensibly? What? Okay. Ostensibly, so that the source of funds cannot be traced back to the agency. According to records, this means that since Alpha Protocol's inception, almost every field agent has to had to set up private safe houses, accounts, and armories for their own use. Yet none of these can be directly accessed by the Alpha Protocol agent itself. Wow. Interesting. Yes, can I can I go now? Can I get out? Thank you. Completed. Retrieve data. Can I read the data? Intel. Individual maybe? No. Well yeah, wait, no. No. Okay. Where did that guy go?
expecting there to be more guards, obviously. You know, the ray back is always harder than the way there. Or not. I mean, maybe I took them all out, so... I mean, logic would dictate I took them all out, but... <laughs> logic. Can I just jump over this? I'm guessing not. Wait a second, can I get through this door now? Okay, I can. Well, good. he going? Where is that guy going? Ah, where'd he go? Come on, man. That ain't cool. You know what? I have an ability for that. just keep on going. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do. Areas off limits. Use your PDA if you're turned around. Okay. How's it going? Who's that? Hello. Am I going the wrong way? Well, they're obviously not upset, so I'm okay to be here. Did I go the wrong way? Oh no, that's not what I wanted to do! You guys must have spent a fortune on the TVs in this place. No! You all done? As much as I thought was necessary. Good. I have to admit, I was worried whether we'd be able to keep you here after you woke up in medical. You gave our staff a run for its money. Maybe it's their training that's in question, not mine. Fair enough. It'll be a good excuse to up the morning drills around here. And here's a surprise. A positive evaluation from Parker. On the number side as usual. But he actually took the time to write a sentence. He did? Uh, what was the sentence? You may have been right about this one, Westridge. For Parker, that's high praise. Assuming you don't let us down, Mike. Looks like that's it for the physical evaluation. Now for the hard part. But I wanted Tell to do more. Tell me why you're here. Not everyone gets chosen for this line of work, but you volunteer. Usually we have to ask. I want to serve my country. And you think by being assigned here is the best way to do that? Give me a mission and I'll prove it. What makes you think you're ready? Because I tell you, we get a lot of recruits in here, and you're not convincing me. My opinion isn't important. Yours is. Not out in the field. And not when you're dealing directly with others. Then your opinion is all that counts. Beyond the guns, tech, and sneaking around in the dark, there's one last part of this job that nobody else here quite gets. I'm listening. Good. Because listening is a large part of it. The way you talk to people. Your attitude. That's what we're going to discuss now. If you're telling me I have an attitude problem, then you could have read that in my file. No, believe it or not, you're not here because you're a people person. You're here because your psych profile says you're skilled at manipulating others. Was that a compliment? You'll see. The way you project yourself definitely affects what people think of you, and your reputation with them. So, this is a win friends and influence people lecture. Hardly. Turning a friend into an enemy and vice versa, well, both can have their positives. Sometimes you want to piss someone off so they can't think straight. Other times you want to build a strong rapport with someone and talk your way out of a bad situation. All depends on your objective. This goes for your handlers as well. We're going to be sending you into a lot of dangerous places, and your only backup is going to be who you're talking to on your headset. 
How you treat them is going to have an effect on the success of your mission. So if I piss them off, I'm screwed? No. A handler that likes you too much and puts emotions before the mission can be just as dangerous as one who resents you. This is a long way of telling me that I should just act the way I want? I didn't realize this was an acting gig. No, again, there are no bad choices, just results. Over time, folks may hear about you and your attitude before they meet you. They may have a preconceived notion of how you're going to treat them, which can affect their reaction. Well, maybe they should take the time to know the real me. If only. Time's something no one seems to be able to spare, especially during the conversation. Although that can be a plus. I don't see how. The clock doesn't stop when you're speaking to someone. So if you need to get your second win before a fight, making small talk can buy you time. But if I'm running on adrenaline, won't chatting take me off my guard? It can. So if you need to get to the point, act instead of fight. For example, if you don't think I have any more to teach you, then you could just say, I'm done with this. I wouldn't think any less of you. You seem to have the basics down. Why wouldn't I just shoot someone instead of talking to them? Sometimes it is better if you shoot first. Still approaching someone to talk to them can allow you to get the drop on them if you get close enough to strike. Use it if you have to, if the conversation isn't going your way. Assuming there's even a way you want the conversation to go. Like if I wanted to seduce someone? I mean, not like I have trouble with that or anything. If that's what you want to do, pay attention to the clues in your environment. Sometimes people will have advice, and intel can help. But there's another way. Read much? Yes. Usually before I'm ordered to destroy the document. There's a host of information out there through dossiers, email, and other documents that represent total research others have collected on a target, organization, or operation. And what does that get me, exactly? Sometimes you'll spot obvious triggers. People who don't respond well to smart asses like me. Others who respect loyalty, duty, a professional approach. Others who don't have time for bullshit and like it when you get to the point. But dossiers just don't contain psych information. They'll usually have combat information on your target as well. What side they favor, any past injuries, common weapons or tactics they use. Some of it blunt, some of it subtle. But if push comes to shove, it can give you an edge in combat. The more you've done your homework, the more vulnerable they'll be. So when the guns come out, the dossier can come into play. Have you read mine? Several times. You have dossiers on everyone here? Yep, if you can dig them up. You might learn a few things. Sometimes reading a dossier will give you more options when dealing with others. A few facts to bring up to shake secrets loose. What about you? You should already know what makes me happy, Mike. And what pisses me off. At what point can I start accessing personnel records and conducting surveillance? After meeting a target or hearing their name referenced by someone else, you should have a target ID. Then hop onto the database and start doing your homework. You can usually unlock their basic information at that point. Let's start with a simple one. al Samad. That should be familiar to you. The terrorist group. Yes, you can research groups as well as people. It doesn't carry the same benefits, but it can provide useful intel in the field. Talking to people about others is a good way to help gain dossier information. Sometimes people will have information on someone that can unlock a brand new thread in your computer search. Okay. So I've suffered through your interrogation. I know how to give one if need be. Am I ready or not? We'll see. Meet me in the command center, and I can give you a proper mission briefing. Good. Because I'm sick of this room. Trust me, Mike. If it was up to me, you'd never see this interrogation cell again. Yeah, I didn't want to get into all that yet. I need to turn in my data. Will it let me turn in my data? My data, no! Recognize him? That Sheik Ali Shaheed, the voice of Al Samad. They say he was responsible for shooting down that airliner in the Middle East. Yeah, he got his hands on some prototype Halbeck technology. A missile with a multi stage targeting system called Jacob's Ladder. That airliner was his first target. Specs and shadiness of this whole thing aside, how did Shaheed get his hands on that missile? Missiles. He's got more. He stole them from Halbeck, and we need them back before he gets any more trigger-happy. Then we want you to kill him. You know where he is. No, but that'll be part of your mission in the Middle East. Find the missiles, then find him, and take him out. You don't want him taken alive. 
If he cooperates, sure, bring him in. On the off chance he tries to kill you, then put a bullet in his head. I'll put my years in charm school to use. All right, then, pack your gear. You're heading to Saudi Arabia. Not coming with me? I'll be there in spirit, and on video and radio when needed, Agent. And I just got here. Ah, oh, well, I'm gonna miss this place. My data! I got it. I'll contact you when you reach Saudi Arabia. Poop! Poop, I say! <laughs> well, gosh. Gee whiz, man. Gee gosh whiz, man. Uh, Alright, well, we're going to go ahead and end this episode here, folks. And I'll be back next time.